You're listening to We Deepen, the Human Connection Network. This podcast is brought to you by We Deepen. We Deepen has partnered with the Esther Perel Discussion Group on Facebook and Love It Up Love to bring you Relate Fest. Relate Fest is for people who are endlessly curious about relationships. It's two and a half days of socializing, learning, connection, and play happening in the weekend of March 4th through 6th in the Miami, Florida area. Due to spatial capacity, the event is limited to 100 people, so if you're interested, make sure to sign up soon. Find out more at wedeepen.com backslash relatefest. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Deepen with Christina. I'm your host, Christina Weber, founder of We Deepen, wedeepen.com. Make sure uh, that you, as you're listening to this podcast, that you go to the calendar at wedeepen.com backslash calendar and check out all of the upcoming transformational experiences that will help you to have a healthy, meaningful, loving relationship. And today, um, it's it's actually, it's a fun day for you to go and look at the calendar because what you'll see is an up and coming experience called the Relate Fest, which will be March 4th through the 6th in the Miami area. And I have the creator of this experience here. Um, and, and I have her here and I'm so excited to share with you because um, – Leah Marshall has started five years ago the Esther Perel discussion group on Facebook. And it is the most active Facebook group that I have uh, seen, experienced. It's something that I've like, it's almost like a dream come true that this space exists. Um, For those that don't know, um, Esther Perel is part of the the, the genesis, the reason that We Deepen is created. Um, years ago, I from 2014 to 2016, I ran a dating experience in New York City. And as I started um, operating this experience, because I just I wanted everyone to find the love of their life and me too. And I thought, just put them into a room and we'll all figure it out. And then I realized, wow, this relating stuff is actually much more... Um, dynamic and um, and and most of us didn't really grow up observing healthy relationships. There's a from when I looked around, I saw a lack of relationship role models, and the topic of love, relationship, conflict resolution, uh, communication is nearly all completely neglected in our educational curriculum. So I looked around and I thought, where, where do we go? What, how do we learn this? And at the time, um, TED Talks um, were, were becoming really popular. And there was a, a, a TED Talk by Esther Perel. Um, I believe that the TED Talk was on the secret desires of a long-term relationship and I watched and I just was like, who is this woman? Yes, everything that she's saying, I feel in my soul as being so important, instrumental. And I started to follow her work. And um, a couple of things that, you know, I, I learned is that, you know, she had shared one of the things is that our relationships need to live inside of a larger social constructs. They need to be supported by community. So while I was doing this one-off experience, um, we there was there was more to it. You know, people need relationship education, and here is this woman who is just speaking my language. And and Leah, um, first, welcome to this podcast. (laughs) Thanks so much, Christina. I'm really thrilled to be here with you. Um, And and you, um, I look at you, and I'm like, wow, she got it too. Like like Esther Perel changed your life in to, to some extent and how you know how were you introduced to her and then also how did that lead to the creation of the one of the most popular Facebook groups um, that there is 
Yeah. Um, it's actually, I think it's such a beautiful story because it comes full circle to what you were talking about starting this dating experiment or experience in New York City. And what strikes me is, you know, all the stories we hear about dating, it's like the attraction, the fun, the good times, the chemistry. And what I've learned over the past years in running this group is so much more of it is attachment theory, which is essentially like the science of how we all respond to connection. And it's really driven by our childhood experiences. Some of us are very afraid of abandonment based on those childhood experiences. And you can be, you know, the most attractive, most charismatic person, but that fear of abandonment is still there. And it's almost like hard to wrap your mind around because society tells you, if you look like this and you achieve this, then, you know, you're going to be confident. Um, but we know is from psychology and the subconscious mind, it's that's just not true. And then other people are afraid of suffocation and engulfment from their childhood experiences. And so some people, when they feel intense connection, will want more of it and will want confirmation of it um, and will want to kind of like lock it in. And other people, when they feel that intense connection, it can almost be like scary and they need space and they want to pull away. Mm. Um, and so... Uh, rewinding a little bit, that 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 attachment theory was very much part of the impetus of me starting the group because I had a really transformational experience with a guy I was dating. Um, that was it was just like it was like everything I you know ever wanted in a relationship, and he ended up ghosting me after several months, and it was after you know what I thought was like one of our best dates and one of my best dates. And it was so confusing, um, especially because my dad, you know, my dad's a psychologist. Um, he and I are super close. He loves talking about feelings. <laughs> like he's never met a feeling he doesn't like. Um, very comfortable talking about feelings, very like self-aware. And so me meeting someone who was emotionally unavailable was just, I never experienced it before and it was super confusing. So, um, so that happened. And then days later, I was at Lewis Howe's annual event called the Summit of Greatness, which I had gone to for several years. Mm. And I saw that Esther was on the schedule. And I was excited because I'd seen videos and interviews she'd done. And I was a fan. And she ended her talk, I think she was the final speaker of the event. And she ended her talk in dating and relationships were often picked for a role that we didn't audition for. And I had this light bulb moment like, wow, I had picked Ben for a role that he didn't audition for. And I learned um, pretty far into dating that he was just out of a long term relationship and not looking for anything serious. And he had picked me for a role that I didn't audition for. And it just kind of brought a lot of clarity to the situation. And I wanted to discuss it with other people. And I have really like smart, emotionally aware friends. But I think like the desire to talk about relationships is like it's an acquired taste. Like just because, you know, you're intellectual and, you know, you're you're emotionally aware. It doesn't necessarily mean you want to talk about like attachment theory, you know, in your free time. And so on a whim, I started the group not thinking anything of it. Like, <laughs> in my head, I think I thought it would just be like me and a few other people. And now it's over 13,500 people from across the globe. It's a highly engaged community, we probably have, um, you know, 10 to 12 posts every day. And the quality of engagement, it's very, um, it's different than what you'd see in other groups. It's, you know, we talk about ourselves being a very curious community. Um, there's no shaming. There's no judgment allowed. Um, it's, you know, you get a warning and then you're removed. Um, there's no generalizations. Men always, women always. That's also not allowed. Um, we don't allow group infighting. So one of Astaire's core tenets is like nuance. It's seeing the gray between the black and the white. It's not about being right and being wrong. It's about opening your eyes to a new perspective. And so that ethos is very much part of our community guidelines as well. We don't tell people what to do. So oftentimes in other groups, you'll see like run or leave him, you know, or leave her. 
And that's also not allowed as well. So we have these kind of guiding tenants inspired by Esther's approach, which you see in her podcast, which you see in her interviews and talks, in her books as well. Um, and that's kind of the, the guiding culture behind our community. Wow. It's, um, it's so incredible how you've built it and maintained it. And this is five years ago when it started. And I imagine, you know, when, when things that I have come to admire about you, um, first off, it, it seems like a kind of a nonprofit service, uh, because there are, you know, you, you are, you are essentially doing this t- as, um, to bridge community with in the most altruistic way. Um, how did, how do you, how do you navigate your energy with how much time that you spend in that community? Because I've noticed myself at times <laughs> before I go to bed, I can be in there reading posts and reading comments because it's, it's some of the most brightest people that are responding to. I mean, my, yeah. there's like light bulb moments and epiphanies going off in, in my brain that as you being the creator of it, how does it not completely absorb your whole entire world and I believe you as an individual also have a life, you have another job outside of this specific community. Right. Um, it's funny because I'm an introvert. And what I found is that um, when I'm interacting with the group, for the most part, it generally is incredibly energizing. Certainly, there have been moments over the past five years where I've needed to respond to a crisis situation. And that can certainly weigh on me. Um, but for the most part, the interacting with the group, um, it really like fills my cup. Um, whereas going to, you know, a big party with lots of noise on a Saturday night would actually have the opposite effect. So I think I'm just kind of wired. (laughs) I feel like I'm wired to do this. Um, I super enjoy it. Um, it's my passion and my purpose, Um, Helping people have more meaningful, richer relationships and also community building are what I see as my purpose. Um, And I design my life to have a lot of space to um, to run the group and moderate the group um, and also provide, um, you know, new content for the group through interviews. Um, We have a weekly women's group that's been going for about, I think, a year and a half now, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, so lots of lots of rich opportunities for connection um, within the community. I imagine that you are a dream for es- Estelle. I mean, you know what? I used to call her Esther Perel, and you had yeah. mentioned that many people do mispronounce her name. It's Esther. That's right, Perel. Yep. And um, when she learned of this group, um, I imagine like how was that? inception of the you two coming together um because i i I can't imagine you going up to her and being like hey i'm gonna start this group it probably just happened right um and then grew popular and when i say it's a dream it it must be a dream for her because you know a lot of i've seen a lot of thought leaders um are kind of they have their own communities they're they're forming around them but i think the greatest compliment to to anyone's work is to have a, 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 like it's like a fan club, uh, and so how did she receive that this Facebook group was taking place and was attracting h- hundreds, thousands of people? Um, yeah, it's so interesting because I'm trying to think. The first, I think, the first moment where I had the awareness was I received um, a member request from someone named Esther Perel, and I thought it was a fake account. Because, you know, you have to write like your um, intention behind joining or what you want to contribute and what you want to give to the community. And the person wrote, I'm Esther Perel and I want to see what this is about or something. It wasn't like her normal kind of like poetic self. But then I looked at the account and it was totally her. So so that was the first moment that might have been like several years in. Um, And then... Um, you know, every year she'll do a video for our community around Thanksgiving um, because we'll, we always do like a virtual Thanksgiving for everyone, which is a lot of fun. So she'll send a message or she'll send some like thought provoking questions for us to noodle on. 
Um, I had an opportunity to interview her around one of her Where Should We Begin podcast episodes. Um, I think that was last year, potentially, or the year before, maybe. Um, and um, you know what? One of the most meaningful moments, she, she rarely comments in the group. She's got a, a ton going on. But there was a thread that got um, a little bit inflammatory. And it was related to, um, I think it was an interracial couple. And there was someone who said, I don't understand why we're talking about race. This doesn't belong in the Esther Perel discussion group. And what's interesting is um, I feel very connected to Esther because of my history. So Esther's parents were Holocaust survivors and um, from Poland as were my grandparents on my mom's side. So um, my grandma and grandpa survived the war in hiding, essentially, and then were brought together by a matchmaker and then fled to New York and had a very successful grocery store in Brooklyn. And um, Esther's parents um, also survived the war. They were the only ones of their many siblings to do so, and they fled to Belgium, and had a small clothing store, and um, and then Esther went to Israel and then to New York. And um, I've always felt this sense of connection because of that history. And what I knew about Esther is, um, I think, again, because of this shared experience, it's like you look at us and you just see like a, a white female, you know, for me and for her. But what you don't know is this history of persecution that makes us feel very connected to, for example, African-American people and now Asian-American people who are being really discriminated against and Hispanic people. Um, and so um, I share all of that because because of my history and that being a very important part of who I am and knowing her history, I knew that cross-cultural therapy and work was a big part of her like start as a therapist. And I knew how um, like race and talking about race was extremely important to her. And so I created a new thread where I basically linked up maybe a dozen of, of Esther's different like perspectives on race and relationships. And she ended up commenting on it and just saying like, I'm so appreciative of this thoughtful response. I feel very like seen and understood. She has a couple very close colleagues who are in the group. So I think maybe one of them like sent her a link to the thread. Um, so that is to say, um, I think she's, um, you know, she's appreciative. I also think she's probably grateful because she has so much going on with her work and maybe me doing it gives her more space and more bandwidth to do the stuff that she does really well. Yeah, I think one of the um, greatest compliments to you is her trust. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's so, so beautiful. And, 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 you know, to me, I dream of the one day I get to connect with her because of, you know, she is the inspiration underneath of of We Deepen and this ecosystem of, of all these events. It's through her words that I then took and, and built this system. And, um, and I've never reached out to her. I've always thought, you know, one day when I have the conversation with her, I think I, I even have a um, in my phone questions like here's conversation topics for when I do um, when I'm, I get to be in the room with her at some point. Uh, what I'm really excited right now is for is now that this group has been a virtual community. Yeah. Um, is now going to have the opportunity to come together and be in person, um, which it sounds as though it's the first time. I don't know if you've done some gatherings in person before. In You're in Chicago, in the Chicago or other areas, but this one seems like it's it's um, has the opportunity to be super impactful, super powerful, and something that repeats on a, a yearly basis. So it's it feels like the first annual uh, Relate Fest uh, that's brought to you by this community is coming to life. So I'd love to hear more about like what's the, the inspiration behind it, why now, um, and what you're planning for it. Yeah, so we've, we've had some smaller gatherings. Um, several years ago, I think it was 2018, um, Esther has an 
annual live event called Sessions Live. And the topic was masculinity. And we ended up doing a series of dinners in New York, LA, and Chicago, where we were talking about some of her ideas about modern masculinity and kind of the the old paradigm of what it means to be a man. And, um, and then some of the newer expectations. She has this quote, like, essentially, women have had a century to redefine um, their identities as women in the Western world. And men haven't really had that same opportunity, Mm -hmm. um, at least in terms of like, kind of like this, you know, major cultural moments, the right to vote, (laughs) the right to own a credit card, (laughs) you know, um, and even just the option to only work, you know, or stay at home or do both. Um, And there hasn't kind of been that same moment for men. So we had these conversations. It was a mix of like thought leaders and then also group members. Um, And uh, they were more kind of like smaller discussions. And what inspired the idea for this big group gathering and to make it an annual thing is just, you know, a lot of us in the group, um, we've become super close, as you can imagine, just being, we're very vulnerable, um, and we're very um, unmasked. And um, it's, you know, we've, we've now had years to build this connection, and a lot of us have never met. And I wanted to just be kind of to just create a space for us to to bring the relationships in person. And um, the the resort that we're having the event at is one of my favorites I've ever been to. It's like this tropical paradise. Um, And it's just this stunning, sprawling space just outside of Miami. And so the idea behind the event is a mixture of workshops and learning and sharing vulnerably And then also just like fun and socializing and just having time carved out to to be together. So that's the that's the vision. It's going to be a two day event um, over the weekend of March 4th through 6th. And um, uh, I'm going to be hosting it um, in partnership with the Leveled Up Love community on Facebook um, which is run by Shai Fishman and Leah Ayala, um, two people who I really respect. And I think that their community values are very much in line with um, my groups as well. Um, and we've confirmed Jessica Fern, who's the author of Polysecure, um, who uh, just kind of has like sent shockwaves, I feel like, through the polyamory and non-monogamy community over the past year with her work on combining attachment theory, which I shared I was really game changing for me um, with non monogamous relationships. And we'll get several other thought leaders as well. Um, And I'll be facilitating a workshop and Shai and Leah will be facilitating a workshop, we're going to do a variety show on the last night. Um, And just again, create moments for play and and socializing and fun. So that's relate fast. And um, it's it's open to people who share kind of the values that I've been talking about over this conversation. And we'd love for you to join us. I I love that you're collaborating with um, Shai and Leah and uh, Level Up Love. Um, I highly respect the two of them. And I've gotten to have fun and geek out on the topic of relationships with, with both of them as well. Um, so, you know, the, the, first off, how, how many people, how many people are you envisioning? How many, how much, how much space do you have? Cause I think the whole wide world should come. So how many can actually fit? I mean, it's a massive resort, so I don't think we're going to run out of space. Um, if you Google the Marriott Turnberry, you'll see it's, um, it's just sprawling and gorgeous. Um, so as many people want to come are welcome to join us. Um, I don't really have a a number in mind because it'll really depend on, you know, we have a lot of partners involved in promotion. So Dr. Wednesday Martin, who I love, is a promotional partner, and Emma and Finn, who run the Normalizing Non-Monogamy podcast, who I love, are partners, and Deepin is a partner. Um, So it'll kind of just depend on, um, you know, if more partners get involved and... um, I know also things are a little bit up in the air with COVID as well. So um, the great thing is, I mentioned my my purpose, which is 
helping people build more meaningful relationships and then building community. And so the way I think of success with this event is like the people who are hungry for an opportunity like this know about it and are able to join us. Um, I don't need like X number of people in order for me to feel like, wow, that was really a success. Um, so if, if the event and connecting in person in a beautiful tropical paradise speaks to you, um, yeah, we'd, we'd love for you to come. Well, you don't have to take in the getting the, the having a goal of the number of people there, but me in um, playing a role in, I think of both of us have a vision of the world that we wish to see, um, of one who, a world that has more meaningful, loving relationships that we're connecting authentically. And so I want the whole wide world there. <laughs> um, so I'll expand that, and I can see this as, you know, potentially um, relate fast grows into like a South by Southwest, um, something that impactful for the relationship industry in itself. Um, so, and I also, you're talking about these two days of workshops. And when we began this discussion, you mentioned attachment theory, which um, I first had discovered through Amir Levine. Oh yeah. Um, he had actually had written the book attachment right. theory. Um, so beyond that, that concept, um, and, and then also, you know, I want to go into, I guess, some of the concepts that you're interested in. And then also from the workshop perspective is that, you know, a lot of what we deepen promotes are experiences that are, you know, say Tantra related, um, somatic healing, EFT, um, authentic relating. What other, um, you know, do, do, are you thinking? Are you thinking more of like geeking out and nerding out? Are there's is there going to be both of like we're going to geek out and nerd out, and then also um, having those connection type experiences for people who maybe come and they're interested in in actually meeting somebody um, because I, I I sort of think that these types of experiences are breeding grounds for your love life. You know, rather than swiping on a dating app, I mean, come to something like this. And also, if you're in a relationship, this is like the perfect place to go to deepen that connection with your significant other, to have that experience of feeling community and that you're doing something, you know, other than therapy for your 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 couple. We, we oftentimes talk of like a self-care practice, but this is like your relational practice and the place to go for that. Um, so yeah, can, can you speak a little bit more of like from a, I guess, a, um, the, the, uh, the concepts that maybe will be covered or that you're interested in covering as well as the, um, the, the connection like experiences that, um, people may have there. Totally. Yeah. So the workshops are going to be, they're going to be small and interactive. It's not going to be like a speaker doing a presentation. It's meant to be more kind of like immersive. And the topics are going to range from what you just alluded to, like boundaries, communicating needs, navigating conflict, jealousy, rebuilding trust after a betrayal. So kind of more, a little bit more of like the meatier, heavier stuff, but then also communicating sexual desires, um, discovering your own sexual desires, um, exploring pleasure, your own and your partner's, Tantra, kink, BDSM. So there's going to be then that might be considered a little bit more of like the lighter, quote unquote, fun piece of relating. <laughs> um, and the workshops. OK, so that's that's the workshops. That's what we're calling our growth track. And then our social track. Um, what's beautiful about the Marriott Turnberry is it's an all inclusive resort. And so they have <laughs> they have an on site water park. So we're going to do, um, we've divided up the program into, um, into these two tracks. So we'll, there'll be time at the water park. Um, there's an aromatherapy steam room. There's a Himalayan salt suite. There's a driving range. There's a beautiful fitness center. Um, the grounds are gorgeous for walking around. We're going to have movement sessions both days. And then I mentioned it's going to culminate on Saturday night with a variety show. 
So, um, and I'm sure there will be after parties and after after parties and whatnot. So you really do get the mix of like the time and the space for socializing, but also if you're interested in working on something very specific with a partner, there'll be opportunities for that as well. Um, and you don't have to come with a partner. You could come single, you can come partnered, you can come with your polycule, <laughs> whatever you like. I, I love the the two tracks, the growth track and the the social track. Um, yes, you know, We Deepens Values are an, an acronym for guidance, and the G is growth comes first. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and then we are, you know, I, I, I'm sort of, I, I guess, of one who believes in this idea of oneness that we're aiming to to achieve oneness, maybe not our lifetime, but in future lifetimes. Um, so social is super important. We grow together. Uh, two days too, and there's so much to do in two days. I, I mean, you know, this is. Um, I could see this definitely people wanting to hang out and be together for even longer than that. And me personally, I'm I'm planning to be there. Um, I unleash is actually the following weekend in the same area in Miami as well. So I saw I'm, that. Yeah, so I'm going to be going to. Um, to the Relate Fest and then off to Unleash. So my March is looking really fun and, oh, and, so and good. So um, you also, you know, I, and what I've seen from the 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 group um, and 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 also what you just shared, you know, there's this full spectrum of um, of relating and love and different ways to do so. And the conversation on Polly. Mm-hmm. Um, um, does come up often. And um, from my experience of, of, um, of you is that um, this is also a practice, I'll say a, a, a practice that is um, um, in resonance with your being. Uh, can you speak to a little bit about, um, you know, and, and just for me, I, I tend to be a more monogamous person, but at the same time, um, you know, the, uh, I, I, you know, I grew up with that idea of, I, I grew up with in my, um, in my world of a lot of cheating mm. and of a lot of lying. Yeah. Um, so I look to Polly and I'm like, well, I would love in, you know, in to have some of those, what we say is like it, that you've learned in the Polly community yeah. of authentic relating and being honest, radical, radical honesty, um, is, is sort of missing or broken in, um, some of the monogamous culture. Yeah. Uh, so I just love, you know, when, when you think, as, as Esther Perel isn't necessarily promoting Polly, but she's open to Polly. Um, how, how does her message integrate with this idea that maybe be, some people are scared of? They're like the idea, ah, no. <laughs> um, how does she and, um, and you work within that, that specific concept? Yeah. What I love about Astaire is she doesn't have like, she's not like pro-affair or anti-affair. She's not like pro-poly or anti-poly. You know, she says open relationships can make a lot of sense, but they're not for everyone. And she sees it more as a relational philosophy about the centrality of the individual and like the freedom of the individual within the relationship. Um, She did a great interview with Dax Shepard, the first one. So she's done two interviews with Dax. The first one she did, they had a really interesting conversation about um, uh, open relationships. And then she also did a panel on YouTube with some um, polyamory experts. It's so funny because I, uh, (laughs) one of my favorite movies growing up was The Music Man. And I loved Mary and the Librarian. And um, I've created this Google Doc of Esther's quotes. It's almost like a kind of like a catalog. And um, and I can I love this Google Doc. <laughs> we have probably over 300 now quotes with the source and um, and the link to to the you know interview or the video. And um, I can like see in my mind the the specific talks where she's really spoken about open relationships. And she did an event, I think it was with the Summit series in LA, where there was a really great audience question where she talked about open relationships. 
um, the Dak Shepard interview, and then this like Pally panel, where are three interviews she's done where she's spoken about it. And then it will also come up sometimes in her Where Should We Begin podcast episodes, um, where there's a couple, maybe one person wants polyamory, or one person wants polyamory for the sexual novelty, and another person wants it for the um, emotional intimacy and connection. Um, that's actually a really interesting um, line to dive into, like your poly why. I think so often people say, are drawn to the idea of polyamory, but they don't articulate and get clear on their poly why. And if they have a partner, their partner doesn't necessarily do that either. And you might have two people who say, okay, like a couple that opens up and say, we want to try this polyamory thing. And one person wants to explore BDSM and kink, but they want emotional intimacy with just that one person. So they want to be like emotionally monogamous and have a lot more sexual novelty in their life. And then their partner might want, doesn't really care about the sex, um, but wants deeper emotional intimacy. And you can see how that would cause a lot of challenges within the relationship. Um, but in terms of me, why I choose polyamory is, uh, for me, I, I'm kind of aligned with Esther. It's more of like um, a connection to this relational philosophy. Um, you know, when I've been dating uh, a man in the past and they're, you know, they're like, you're mine, that's always felt like really not, um, I'm not drawn to that, like this idea of kind of this ownership. Um and at the same time, I, I love the idea that you can meet someone and bring energy from that relationship to other relationships. Mm. Um, I love the communication norms in poly. I feel like, um, re- I feel like just like talking about boundaries and needs and desires is so normalized within the culture. And that's something, as I'm sure you've gathered, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of. Um, I also, I'm in a unique situation in that I don't want kids. Um, I could take or leave marriage. It's not like a a goal or a vision that I have. I enjoy living alone. So, um, it, it just also, there's kind of that additional element. I think if you do want to have a family, it's, it's an additional, you know, layer to, to navigate. Um, but for me, it's more, for me, it's more a relational philosophy and, um, um, I'm involved with some of the poly groups in Chicago, and um, it's just also been a really meaningful community to be plugged into, um, which, as I've shared, is um, super important to me. Mm. Yeah, the, the communication norms within in poly, I think anybody, um, whether you desire a monogamous relationship or, or a, a, a non-traditional relationship just looking into these communication norms it's it's so um that's one of the greatest things i've learned when i've studied um polyamory um you know the the quotes that you mentioned um that document with all the quotes i i'd love to see that somewhere um i imagine that you know, as I, I have some of my favorite, you know, as, as you were speaking, Esther quotes, um, one of them, I can't, I tried to Google to pull as we were speaking, but is around, she talks about, you know, everything now in relationship is up for negotiation. Yeah. So even within that idea of the, the communication norms that you speak of, um, it's so important to really talk about everything and to have these deep experiences with the people that we want to be with. Um, understand? I think that's for me personally, why I gravitate more towards monogamous myself is because there's so much depth mm-hmm. <laughs> within that conversation. And, um, I, I, um, although I am, um, actually I, I want to take away that word, although, but I do desire to be a mother and I am recently 40 and I'm currently single. Um, so I also, at the same time, practice the um, trust and faith in God and my path and um, and what I'm I'm here for. Uh, but definitely those communication norms um, and knowing that when I am encountering um, a connection, that it it takes for me. It's not natural. Um, it's not easy 
So it's, you know, they say everything that you desire is outside of your comfort zone. Um, and, and going to those deep places and, and those vulnerable places is actually which brings us closer uh, together. Yeah. Um, but back to those quotes, you know, I, you know, because I'm so excited at this event, I can't help but think, you know, we deep and we works with um, multiple brands of transformational experiences. And, and one of them is um, mind travel, which is Murray Hittery. And Murray, um, he is known for one of his signature experiences is he takes this grand piano out to on the beach um, in Santa Monica or into Central Park. And everyone wears these silent disco headsets. And he um, uh, channels the piano directly into the headphones. And a few years ago, he did um, a special edition where he took all of David Bowie's quotes and he incorporated them within the music in your headset and you heard um uh david bowie's like his his uh you just went on a journey through his psyche that just felt enlivening and empowered to you and um a few years ago i planted the seed with murray of like what if we do something like that with um with a the relationship quotes um, and with you having them prepared, I think I'm going to ping him again and and if, if you're okay with this and ping him again and say, hey, maybe there's an opportunity at the Relate Fest um, to do this type of experience and collaboration, which would just... That would be so amazing. I have... So this just, <laughs> this just shows you like the level that I'm at. I took some of my favorite quotes and put them into uh, like more of like a PowerPoint. Um, so, cause the Google doc can be a little bit overwhelming visually. I'll send you the PowerPoint. Um, cause that has some of the, like the juiciest ones, I think. And it, we would love to collaborate with, um, with it's, you said mind, mind travel, mind travel yeah. and very hittery. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. Amazing. Um, well, it's been so wonderful to have this conversation with you. I am so excited to be with you in person, and thank you for this time here today. Um, I would love to close out with um, one question for you. Um, how is your love life? You know, it's interesting. I it, It's been the most challenging year of my life. Um, I, I was living in an apartment with a lot of noise, And I mentioned like, I'm an introvert, like my home is my sanctuary, you know? Um, And I, I am like out and about a lot, but I also like just cherish kind of that quiet uh, at home time. And it was, it was not a good situation for me. And I ended up buying a home as so many of us did uh, at the beginning of this year, moving and then going right into remodeling. And as we were remodeling, we found a leak and, um, the, I didn't make plans to like live somewhere else during the remodeling. And it took a lot longer than I expected. And I was not taking care of myself well during that time. Normally, like my sleep is just outstanding. Nutrition is great. Hydration is great. Movement is great. Stress is low. I really prioritize that in my life. And during that time, everything was like flipped upside down. And I ended up getting, not surprisingly, I got a herniated disc in my back. Um, And I just had surgery. And I share all of this because I've been really, um, I've been so overwhelmed with kind of like life this year um, that it's been really hard to make space for (laughs) romance. And I will also add that a huge part of my life is I love pole dancing. It's a major way that I connect with my own sense of eroticism and sexuality and play. And I'm part of an amazing pole dance community in Chicago. Um, And the owner of the studio is one of my favorite people in the world who I just like look up to and adore and appreciate. And so because of the surgery, I haven't been able to do pole dancing. So um, I would say um, I feel like I'm coming out of this like very dark, dark era (laughs) where I've been super overwhelmed and 
putting my time and energy into things that I just rather not, you know, be doing. And then I was in a lot of pain because of the injury. And now I'm like in recovery mode, which has been really smooth, but I'm still not able to do a lot of the stuff that I love. So um, I'm feeling excited about next year. Um, But this past year has been, it's just been different priorities for me. Mm, So dusting it off (laughs) and what I, um, I like to hear in a meeting yesterday, um, a a colleague had shared that um, he's viewing 2022 as a new era. It's a completely new era. We're dusting off all the turbulence, all the challenging from the past two, three years and just moving into this era of of connection. Um, Thank you for leading us in there. And I think, too, in, in your answer, you know, when I asked, how's your love life? It just shows how the interconnectedness yeah. of our entire world is all in relation to the answer of that particular question. Yeah. Um, and then last, just a little piece about me, too, is I love pole dancing as well. I've enjoyed watching your pole dancing videos. I think a, a long time ago, I, I, I scrolled through your, your Facebook and I was like, oh, my God, she's so beautiful mm-hmm. when she dances. And when I lived in New York City years ago, I... Um, um, did Sheila Kelly's S Factor. Yes. Um, so I did probably three years of that and had a pole in my New York City apartment. Um, and it's something that I, I haven't um, I haven't had a chance to do in the past um, few years. Um, but you seeing that that's inside of you, it, it reminds me as well of, of the joy that I once had and will have again for pole dancing too. So yeah. cheers to more pole dancing in the future as well. And I hope that... Anyone listening here, um, come join us. Um, be with us in Miami. Hey, come spend the whole month. Let's just be the whole <laughs> month in, in Miami, at least the first two weeks. Um, and you can check out that experience at WeDeepen.com. I'll also, in the show notes, if you go to WeDeepen.com, I'll link you to um, the discussion group yep. on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, so come and join us. See what it's all about. Um, say in the notes that you learned of it from this podcast or from the We Deepen Network, and um, and come be with us in person because that's really the, where the the real deep um, connection happens. Um, so we go online to also be offline together, and that um, that uh, what's the the word I'm looking for? But that that everest connection um, between the virtual and the in person real life world. Thank you all. Um, And thank you, Leia, uh, for being a part of this. Thanks, Christina. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, Thank you all for tuning in uh, to this episode. And if you enjoyed it, please share it with friends. Um, Like, follow, leave a comment. It helps other people discover this podcast and get access to this world of transformation and education on how to have a more meaningful, loving relationship. Okay, everyone. Bye for now.